the landmine. It's all you need. The landmine is the perfect bridge between strength and mobility training. The landmine to me holds the sweet spot of movement training. It's simple, a bar and a wall. It's effective, variable loading, and it allows for movement freedom. It can be a force you work against or a guide for balance and stability. Strength or agility? Well, much of fitness content is geared around high strength goals or huge muscles. And that is because it is relatively easy to attain with simple programming. Now, athleticism, not so much. Strength training is just that strength, while athleticism encompasses speed, agility, and stamina. As an adult, we understand that there is more to fitness than the big three lifts, and a disproportionate amount of time spent chasing elite strength numbers is going to affect other aspects of your fitness, like conditioning, mobility, and agility. Much of the pain that powerlifters face stems from their lack of movement variety. It is easy for a kid to focus on only the strength side of fitness because he or she is still living an active lifestyle. The lifestyle of an adult, however, spends most of their time and energy juggling financial and familial-based obligations. That leaves very little time to train all the facets of fitness. I believe that if you are over 30, that developing or maintaining agility should take precedent over gaining monumental strength. The landmine, I believe, fills this gap. Let me explain. One plane. If the big three or four lifts could be described in one word, it would be sagittal. This plane is only one of three planes within three-dimensional space and training only one plane limits your global movement potential. As I've explained in my video on the deep squat, your frontal plane ability is correlative to your squat depth capability. Through Leonardo da Vinci's work, The Vitruvian Man, we see that with all limbs extended, man encompasses a circle of movement capability. If we take this 2D depiction into 3D space, we see that Human's movement capability is encompassed in a sphere. Mobility is the confidence to move within this ball of movement without fear. Non-contact pain is just that, a fear mechanism. How can we defeat this fear? Well, with confidence, through progressive exposure. The more you practice certain pathways within this ball of movement, the easier it becomes exemplified by lessened hesitation or resistance to that movement. But training only a few pathways leaves the others forgotten, at least neurologically. The landmine, through its pivot, provides the ability to access all three planes of motion, sagittal, frontal, and transverse plane, with load using only one tool, flat-footed versus toe integration. The squat and the deadlift are great for building baseline strength, placing the body under high neural and mechanical load, which is key for building and developing strength. But what about athleticism? What sport is performed without an elevated heel? A common concern amongst good coaches and athletes is how much strength can be developed without losing the bounce and the ankle dorsiflexion is the root of the bounce. Overloading flat-footed patterns diminishes athletic movement over time because it's bypassing the full range of motion provided by the ankle. This is akin to throwing a ball without any wrist action. With a landmine, you have the ability to incorporate the ankle into your lifts, maintaining fascial lines of movement. Because fascia is the driver of athleticism, force vectors. So where are you going? Well, no matter the direction, you'll need to lean into it. Athleticism involves movement along the horizontal and vertical plane. Think of a field or a court. The landmine provides a way to train this with resistance, mimicking more real life movement. So do you see how this force is applied? The tangential movement of the tire can be seen in the landmine deadlift with toe-off. The force vectors combined with bilateral movement 
are the situations that we experience the most in everyday life, such as walking, running, throwing, and jumping. Well, it's not for everything. While I love the landmine, you still need a pull-up bar. And all the benefits that I've mentioned will lose their effectiveness under extreme load. Positioning is key. So start with just the bar. Movement should take precedent over how much you can lift while incorporating progressive overload. So that means I like to move in a variety of movements, but with added weight. As I get older, I find movement quality, range of motion to be the center of my performance. You know, lately, if I cheat the movement, I only end up cheating myself. And the karma from that is instant. Accessibility. Well, you can't get easier than this. You can start with just a bar and a used one at that. You don't need much space. This modular setup can be stored very easily. You just roll it to the side of your room and stow it right here. You can use a landmine attachment or start with just a tennis ball and a wall. You can easily add three to four plates on this before the bar becomes imbalanced. So you're looking at 225. So that's a great amount of load that this can carry. Most people find it hard to grip the bar end of the barbell, especially once the load becomes heavier. For that, there is a landmine handle attachment that you can buy. I'll leave it in the link below. And you just slide that right on. And there, again, you have the same circumference as the traditional barbell grip. Not only that, there are many attachments that you can get to perform landmine exercises with. So while I suggest starting out with the barbell and the handle, the upgrades are almost limitless. I still use every fitness tool available to me, but if you are short on time and want an efficient training method, this is ideal. If you want to build a home gym and you're short on space or funds, this is a great recommendation. A pair of 45 pound dumbbells will run you at least $115. That's crazy. That's just one pair. Think of how many exercises you'd like to perform. You're going to need more than just one pair. And so that is why I think a landmine setup like this is the best option. It is the greatest bang for your buck gym that you can find. And it's perfect for small spaces. And it's relatively portable. You can see it only took me a few minutes to even connect this together. I bring my setup to the park all the time on a regular basis and it takes no effort relatively to take out all the equipment. With a standard seven inch Olympic bar, preferably you'd buy that used, a landmine base, a bumper plate for safety and so you can drop it when you feel like, and an assortment of metal plates. And right there alone, you have a setup that can be used for an innumerable amount of exercises. It covers a wide gamut. You can do total body exercises on just this, and you're still coming in at around $400 for the total setup. And compare that to the dumbbells, this is only twice the price. And whether you decide to build out that gym, at least you're still starting with a barbell and a set of weights. And easily, you can just take this off, slide it out, put on another plate, and you can use it as a traditional barbell with traditional lifts like squats and deadlifts. Real world mobility and strength can be attained with just a landmine setup. Combined with a nutrition-based diet, your aesthetics will improve also. This setup is truly the Swiss army knife of fitness. Think of it as a cross between a machine and a traditional barbell setup. And that's why I recommend it to you. What do you think? I'd love to hear from you because I think that it's the greatest thing I could find for the price. And I use this on a regular basis. And I love a landmine setup and I like the exercises that I can do with it. This has been Grown and Healthy, the channel where we explore self-improvement through movement. Thanks for watching.